Shalom to everyone. Uh, I'm going to call this New Year's Deception, but there's some groundbreaking information. Well, I would say for me, um, and I'm going to need some clarification on those who are very well um, versed. Um, and those of you that just can do better math than me. Okay. Um, I wanted to start out this video with this because um, we understand in the Hebrew um, now that that uh, now that the brothers from the gathering of Christ Church have the most high revealed the true way you supposed to worship the true Sabbath days, which was a very groundbreaking um, video. Um, I was very relieved to know that. Um, and I pay my respects because they are on, very well on point. There's no question about that. Um, so we know that March 17th is in the Gregorian calendar, calendar, January the 17th, excuse me, March the 17th is the first day of the week, which is Sunday, because you have equal day, equal night prior to our right, uh, previous. So that next day, which is Sunday, is the first day of the week. And the reason why I'm going here in the first part of this, this lesson, because I need some clarification on, on some things, and maybe you all can give me some comments and maybe you all can uh, contact them uh, to see what they say about this those of you that comment on their videos and they respond alright when it says month one March 17th Sunday alright so that's the that's our first month when I say our I'm talking about the Hebrew the, the, the Enoch calendar month one right so that's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Then the seventh day, even though it's a little off to the left, but it's correlating, it's coinciding with that seventh day, which is their March 23rd, their Saturday, which is our Sabbath. So what I'm doing is showing you the days that our Sabbaths fall on under their Gregorian days, which is called Saturday which is nothing but the worship of Saturn. So this is all correlated. It's all going together perfectly, right? Okay, you got Saturday, the Sab Sabbath or whatever, the 14th. See, it all correlates. Sabbath, 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 Sabbath. So you're going to have four Sabbaths in one month because you got 30 days. Okay, one Sabbath is going to be on the 7th, the next one going to be on the 14th, the next one going to be on the 21st, the next one going to be on the 28th. That's easy math for me. I understand that. What I'm not understanding is, and I'm like I said, I'm going to need some clarification. Like I said, I'm still learning. We all still trying to learn. You got the second month, right? Now, if you use their days, now this is 2013 calendar. If you use their days, you got April 16th, which is a Tuesday. You can check that right now. April 17th is a Wednesday. April 18th, Thursday. 19th, Friday, 20th, Saturday, Sunday. But see, our Sabbath falls on their Monday, the 22nd, April. But the thing about it is, it's all lined up. Every, every Sabbath to their Monday lines up. Okay. All right. Sorry for my computer jumping. Every time the heat comes on, the thing it messes my everything messes this computer up. She's so picky. All right. Um. So like I said, I'm, I've done six months of this, and it gave me a headache. <laughs> uh, like I said, I could be off somewhere. My math. I'm not good in math at all. Uh, I know how to count money, and that's it. All right. Um, but when it comes down to trying to put things in certain areas to make it add and all that, I may need some help. All I want to do is I'm making this video and this, these lessons and all that. I just want to know. That's why I put this information out there first. Because I want to know exactly what's going on. But I do know this. That their March 14th of 2014 is hijacked. Because it says equal day, equal night. When you follow the, the actual... If you go to timeanddate.com, 
um, and you put in Jerusalem. Let me get that information real quick. I was going to go into this late, later, but I, I need to go into this now. Okay, get this out of the way. Spring equinox, which they call vernal equinox or whatever, it's a fraud. That's what I put up there, March 20th. That's that's a fraud. That's paganism. That, that links to the goddess of star and the the, the summer solstice under uh, getting ready for Easter and all that mess. Okay, that's nothing. That's a bunch of garbage. That's not it. That's nothing. I just want to put that out there. This is how you know when you have equal day and equal night. You have to, you can use, it's best to use Jerusalem, but I even put in my coordinates of the vicinity of where I live at in this Washington area, Washington, D.C., you know, Washington, D.C., Maryland vicinity. And you can put in this information. Hopefully it's not too blurry. You can go to, uh, man, this is so blurry, man. But anyways, you go to timeanddate.com, go to that scroll menu, which is called Sun and Moon. Then you go to Sun Calculator. And after you go to Sun Calculator, you put in your information. Put in March of any year, and you can put in Jerusalem uh, location, and then you're going to get this. You're going to get this information here. And like I said, I sh I'm showing you even in our, in my information here, for Maryland, D.C. vicinity, East Coast, etc. I highlighted how it shows on March 16th that it correlates exactly what's being taught in the book of Enoch because you're going to have March 16th just about equal day equal night the night is a little longer here but the next thing is a little harder it's not clear but it's March 17th which is the new year you got more daylight on this uh on the PM side, it'll be March 17th. It the the sunrise at 7:16 a.m. Then the sun sets at 7:17 p.m. So you get more daylight that next day, which is the new year, and it falls like that every single year. And see, I have the coordinates for. Or the information for Jerusalem. And it's more accurate because it says 548, 548. That's equal day, equal night. That's the Sabbath. Then you got the 17th. It's 547 sunrise and 549 p.m. for the sunset. So you got more daylight. All right. But see, the reason why I want to go into this information is because. This is true. And this is not. Okay, these calendars, this is nothing but a moon calendar. And I am coming to the understanding, I'm starting to come to the realization that we can't even follow their same Saturdays because uh their Saturdays are not the same as Enoch's Saturdays. Month two, if you follow, see, they did it right this month. You got Saturday, 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 Saturday. Month one, March 17th. See, because they started out right, because you got that first day of the week is March 17th, because that's the first day of the year. Month one. So it's going to be right. So you're on the seventh day, it's going to be on the Saturday. But what they did, they hijacked month two because they keep adding a month here, you know, uh, adding one day or one day off. And, you know, because they're following the moon. So you're going to be off on your weekdays. So their weekdays don't even correlate with our day's number. OK. See that Monday it says Sabbath seven. And I apologize if my computer is slowing down. See, Monday, Monday, Monday in the second month. And like I said, if you follow their months all the way through, 
I had month two, which is so-called April the 16th. So if you're in April and you're in the 16th day, it's going to be Tuesday. But that's our first day for that month. OK. So it doesn't go together at all. So like I said, they got one day off one day. It's, it's a moon calendar, so we can't even our Sabbath don't even fall on their same Sabbath days. Our Sabbath may be on their Mondays. Uh, I have another calendar here. Our, I mean, it's ridiculous. Our Mondays, our our Monday, excuse me, their Wednesday is our Sabbath. If you count seven, like I said, please give me some more information. I can I'm, I could be a little confused, but as I'm going through this. We got to do away with their calendar in 100%. Totally. Deal with, don't deal with that at all. But like I said, when it comes down to Jerusalem, this is on point. Because you got equal day, equal night. Then you got 547, 548 that next day. That's the 17th, which is the first day of the year. That's month one. If you keep that cycle going all the way with their days of the week, because they keep counting, uh, they, they take a day off and add a day and all that, our Sabbath's going to be all if we follow their Saturdays. All right. I'm just putting it out there. I don't know. Like I said, please, I hope some people hit me up. I hope this video get a lot of views so I can so we can get some understanding on that. All right. Um, let me get into this wicked lesson. Information about this this madness of this New Year's won't take but so much more time because it doesn't need to. Now, usually when you get into this type of information, when it comes down to New Year's or any other type of truth, um, you're going to hear that you know you're delusional or you know um, you're a conspiracy theorist or you're thinking too much and you know God don't care about all that knowledge oh man I've heard that before don't trust me I've heard it heard it all you know you kicking knowledge and you know God don't care about it. all he wants you to do is you know believe in his son and you know just go to church and that's it and you you off you off to heaven you are all here we go no knowledge though that is bull garbage. I don't want to hear that ever again. Okay? Now, let's find out when you do understand this information, what you're going to do with the information. What are you going to do with it when you get it? Because once you do the research on New Year's, you're going to realize that you're nothing, all you're doing is following a God. But it's not the God of the Hebrews and it's not the God of the Bible. OK, um, it's not the God of the Bible at all. Um, you're following a Roman God, which is Janus. OK. So once you understand this, what you're going to do with information, are you going to teach it and show others that, you know, we don't supposed to bring in the new year. On January 1st. OK, dropping of the ball and all that. That's nothing but when they dropping the ball and all that, that just represent how they are trying to provoke the most out of war and they want this world under Satan's authority to fall. Okay, that's all that ball dropping represents. They don't want this earth to last any much longer. They want to kill mankind in the world, in this earth. And they want to kill you. That's all it represents. That's just a representation of Satan trying to kill off man in this world. So he's dropping the ball on you. He's dropping the bomb. OK, period. That's all that represents. Now. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 17. OK. Well, Proverbs chapter 17, verse 15 and 16. Matter of fact, hold that right and go to Daniel chapter 7 verse 25 now I'm going to bring this out because it's in my head again I'm just going to bring how this information how they hijacked information I'm going back and forth but 
Let's go to Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, real quick. Daniel 7 to 25. And it says, And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into the hands until a time and a time and a dividing of times. So these devils that run the country and the Western world and all the other parts of the world with these different calendars, they thought to change times and laws. See, if they can get you away from the true understanding of how to follow God, then you're off his tuning. You can't understand his frequency. Even though he still deal with this, but it's going to be scrambled. You can still get some of the information, but it's like, do I know? Or maybe not. It's like, you may be able to hear him a little bit, but it's, hey, I'm over here. So you can throw up the Sabbath and they profane the Sabbath. Then that's the reason why we are trying to fight for the understanding. And I'm just fighting myself. I could be fighting myself with this, but as I'm looking at it, the Sabbath do not correlate uh, their Gregorian Saturdays does not correlate with the Enoch seventh day Sabbath. Okay, let me just finish this. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 17, verse 15 and 16. Proverbs chapter 17, verses 15 and 16. It says, He that justifieth the wicked and he that condemneth the just. Even they both are an abomination to the most high. So if you condone the wickedness that I'm about to get into, if you can see this lesson that I'm about to get into when it comes down to the New Year's origin, because I asked about 10 people um, in a course of about maybe three months, they didn't know the origin of it at all. And a lot of them didn't care. They just, all they wanted to do is get this year over with and they want to use their vacation leave and, you know, they just you, like, man, this is ridiculous. I mean, seriously, you don't want to know. That's the hypnosis that Satan has put on people. This ancient witchcraft is it's high level witchcraft. It's, people don't understand that they're under uh, hypnotic spirit. They're hypnotized. They, they're low. Their, their brain is dual of learning. And they don't understand it. They think it's okay to deal with certain things. Not knowing that the Bible is the only way you're supposed to follow. You're only supposed to follow the Bible. If you don't see Christ and the disciples saying Happy New Year, you don't even see Happy New Year in the Bible nowhere. Where does this mess come from? Your mind should be like, well, I want to learn. I want to understand what is this garbage. I mean, where does this stuff come from? But we don't do that. We don't understand that. All right, so that's why it says, he that justified the wicked and he that condemneth the just. So when you talk to people like, look, man, this is the true way you're supposed to do this and that's not the New Year and all that. Oh, you're trying to kick some knowledge. <laughs> they think he knows something. Huh? Mark, and that's, con that's condemning. Okay? He that condemneth the just, even they both are an abomination to the Lord. Because they'll tell you, oh, it's okay, man. God love your heart, and, you know, he, he got you. And then I know some people I talk to, they know the information already. Like, well, yeah, man, you know, that makes sense. And I found this out about this New Year's and that Janice God and all that. Yeah, man, I... And then the next person that walk past, they talk on Happy New Year. I'm going to tell you what goes on to that because that's considered, you're considered a fool based on scripture. That's foolish. Because what you're going to do with the information? You don't suppose to just condone to it, know it, and then condone and then think it's okay. Watch. Verse 16. Wherefore is there a price in the hand of a fool to get wisdom? You see what the Bible is saying? Is there a price for, the hand, for a fool to get wisdom? Seeing he has no heart to it. So if I give you the information and you go ahead and understand it and still try to, you know, show me some information and you don't, you still talking to other everybody else like, hey, happy New Year's, then you're a fool based on scripture. Wherefore, is there a price in the hand of a fool to get wisdom? Seeing he has no heart to it. See, you don't even have no heart to the information that you understand. This wisdom that I just shared with you. You're a fool based on scripture because you got the information you know it's pagan but you supposed to go to a church and you supposed to believe in God but yet you following the Janus God that really really irks me when people know this information they 
show me some information, but yet they still deal with it. You are a fool based on scripture. OK, enough of that, because I don't try ain't trying to get worked up because that stuff really, really irks me. Now, the history of New Year's, the deception. Let's go into this garbage. I'm just going to read some few excerpts of this garbage. And then after that, I'll be done with the garbage. OK, let's go to garbage paragraph one. In 46 BCE, the Roman Emperor Julius Caesar first established January 1st as a New Year's Day. Now, this says Julius Caesar. Is Julius Caesar written in the scripture or is it Jesus Christ written in the scripture? Now, I'm just going to use Jesus Christ for those who may not know the Hebrew understanding, which is Yeshia. But this says Julius Caesar. This don't have nothing to do with the scriptures. But you'll be in church and watch night or something. I heard the term watch night breaking in the new year, not understanding you're breaking in the God of doorways as a portal or a vortex for spirits. End of days. They showed that in the movie End of Days. OK. Wake up. In 46 BCE, the Roman Emperor Julius Caesar first established January 1st as New Year's Day. Janus was the Roman god of doorways and gates and two faces on one two faces one looking forward and one looking back okay Caesar felt that the month named after this god January would be appropriate door to the year that's what it says in parentheses um yeah door to the year quote unquote Caesar celebrated the first January new year by ordering the violent a uh, routing of revolutionary Jewish forces in the Gal in Galilee. Now you see that you see the spirit behind this, right? Let me read that again. Caesar celebrated the first January New Year's by ordering the violent uh, routing of revolutionary Jewish forces in Galilee. Eyewitnesses say blood flowed in the streets. Now they got you in the streets celebrating this mess. This is just based on war. That's all it's based on. The fireworks and all the, the dropping of the ball, like I said. The fireworks. Now they got you in the streets of New York, where the UN is, under uh, United Nations, over there in that city, Babylon, the, the, that's the headquarters of Babylon, which is America. If you count the 24 five windows in the Statue of Liberty's head, it'll say United Headquarters, United Nations Headquarters, 25 letters. If you do a Wheel of Fortune type style uh, letter puzzle, okay, so we, we just need to wake up on this. Let me read to this other uh, paragraph of this mess. As Christianity spread, pagan holidays were either incorporated into the Christian calendar or abandoned altogether. By the early medieval period, most of Christian Europe regarded um, annual citation day, March 25th, as the beginning of the year. So even they're off when it comes down to March, but it, at least it's to the point where uh, <laughs> they know that springtime is the time of the new year because bears and stuff right now in January is still sleep. I'm not giving this stuff credence because it's not March 25th. That's still the, 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 the spring salters and all that. The new year is when it's equal day, equal night. That's the 16th day. It's a Sabbath. The 17th day of a month of, of March in the Gregorian calendar is March is the the new year all right we'll read another paragraph of this garbage it says about 500 years later in 1582 pope gregory the 13th aka hugo bon company 1502 to 1585 abandoned the traditional julian calendar by the Julian reckoning, the solar year compromised 365.25 days, and the intercalation of a leap day every four years was intended to maintain the correspondence between the, the calendar and the seasons. 
Really, however, there was a slight inaccuracy in the Julian measurement. The solar year is actually 365 days, 5 hours, 48 minutes, and 46 seconds. 365.2422 days. That's a load of garbage, but um, I just need to read this deception so you understand that this is how they get you. It's not if you if you take 52 weeks times seven is 364. It's 364 days in a year. Okay, it's not it's not 365 days in a year. So that's a load of crap. All right, so this just goes on and on to just tell you how you know. When it started, Roman Emperor Julius Caesar first established January 1st in New Year's Day, the goddess Jan, the god Janus of doorways and gates. That's what I really wanted to pull out in this document. There's more other information to tell you that. You can just put in the origin of the word January. So they're going to bring in the god of doorways to set the tone for the rest of the year, their year. All right, now, see, this links to straight witchcraft of the witching hour as I brought out in another video see the witching hour um, is called midnight and it's the term witching hour refers to the time of day when creatures such as witches and demons and ghosts are thought to appear and to be their most powerful and black magic to be most effective the reason why it's most effective at 1201 because that's the time you're dealing with going out partying and drinking so you're more susceptible to devils and spirits that's just the way it go because we're trained to get paid on a Friday night which is really the Sabbath day starting at the Sabbath okay and you are on that day dealing with straight partying and drinking and smoking and doing whatever and now you have a spirit inside of you that's the way it starts now I'm going to get into some information on the word itself, January or Janus, which is the, the god of doorways. Door in the Greek, all right, Greek number 4440, and it's Poulon, P-U-L-O-N, Poulon. And it says a gateway, door, way of a building or a city. By implication, a portal. So it's telling you it's by a portal. That's how do you you? It's a vortex or a portal for spirits. That's why it says God of doorways. So that's what you're dealing with. Once you deal with that that ritual, you're condoned to it. You're strengthening that demon. Sounds crazy, but that's what happens. See, a lot of people don't know that the Western world can win wars based on these demons, these and these these spirits that they that they worship. But they need our prayers our worships our reverence to it that's why they come out with the, the, the movie clash of the titans when when uh hades the guy which is hades is hell but his name was hades he was able he told that he told uh zeus that they need your prayers see that's the way they got it set up if we don't pray to their gods or condone to their their dev, their devilish ways then they can't, they don't have any power over them. This kingdom will fall, but we're empowering their, their, their devils. Because God of doorways is nothing but one of the falling angels. And what they do, they just name themselves after, you know, to, to hide themselves, hide their true identity. All right, then you got doorway in the Greek. And it says, Diablos. It's almost like Babel or Babylon, which amazed me. All right, then it says, from the base of 939, which is another uh, correlation of the word, and belos, a threshold, accessible as by crossing the doorway, by implication of Jewish notions. Jewish notion, not Jews, not the Jews, us, because we don't get no reverence, we don't have we're not since they don't think that we're Jews anyway so this is talking about the Jewish people in the nation of in our land over there in Israel today Jewish notion 
heathenist, wicked, profane person. That's what doorway mean. Because they came up, they're considered the heathen, the Jewish. They're telling you in this definition who are the, the heathens. The heathens are the other nations that don't believe in Christ. So they're considered, it says heathenist, Jewish notions. Wicked, profane. Then it says person. Heathenist, wicked, profane. That's all in the definition of doorway. Or door, excuse me. Okay, let's go to Isaiah chapter 47, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 47, verse 1. And it says, Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. So once we stop empowering their most their 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 devils and dealing with their holy days, well not even holy days, their holly witchcraft days and their false New Year's crap, you won't be able to empower them anymore. So What's going to happen to her eventually? Babylon itself, which is America, come down and sit in the dust. That's what's going to happen. She's going to sit in the dust. She's going to get burned. Vir o virgin daughter of Babylon. The reason why it's called it, the Most High is calling her a virgin daughter because America has never been hit with war on this soil. That's the reason why. You, right now, you go into an, another country, you'll see tanks running all down the neighborhoods and all that. In America, you don't see that, but eventually that stuff is coming here. Okay, that's why I said it's old virgin daughter. She's never been touched uh, when it comes to war. Old virgin daughter of Babylon, sit on the ground. There is no throne, so the Most High is going to going to take the throne. Gonna, that's why Christ is going to have many crowns. Then it says, "O daughter of the Chaldeans." The Chaldeans are magicians and magic, dealing with a bunch of magicians, uh, witchcraft. Every time America build one of those Egyptian obelisks or dealing with the ancient uh, Babylonian uh, customs under magic and witchcraft, they're considered the Chaldeans as well. O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. It's not going to be delicate, not going to be tender at all. Talking about your free speech and all that. No, nah, I mean your freedom and Land of the free, you're not tender or delicate. It's gonna be, it's gonna fall. Okay. Like I said, that ball dropping and all that, what they did was they want us to follow their law, their evil god Janus, to start the start their year off. You believe deceptively that the year starts in January, and that ball dropping just represents how they are. When I read in uh, how there was a war, um, let me go back here. Give me a minute here. Well, basically, that's not even in my head right now. What I wanted this 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 was in my head. Let me tell you what's going on. When it comes down to this stuff, to be honest, when it comes down to this stuff, they want, they don't want the Hebrew people to rise at all, okay? That's what I really want to get into because if they can hijack your days, hijack your Sabbath, that's why I want to get in that calendar, then you're all off. The whole thing is off for you. You know, you're going to be all, and they want to kill you in this world. They, that ball dropping just represent them wanting to kill you, the Hebrews, and those who follow Christ. Okay, they're not really dealing with the other nations if they're not following Christ. All the other nations are included, but if you're not following Christ under the teachings of the Hebrews and you're done. So that's the ball dropping means you're going to die. Okay? Isaiah, let's go to Isaiah chapter 22 verse 18. 
Isaiah chapter 22, verse 18 says, He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a bowl into a large country. There shall thou die, and there the chariots of thy glory shall be the shame of thy Lord's house. <clears throat> so, he will surely violently turn and toss thee like a bowl into a large country. So that's what it represents. He's going to, he's showing you through the other nations, the heathens. He put the spirit of them, that spirit on them to chastise his people. So he's going to toss us like a ball. So that's what the ball dropping represents. He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. It's considered a large country. Everybody do trade and do business in this country. There shall thou die. So you're going to die. That's how people died in the streets. <clears throat> Murdering each other, slavery, uh, doing segregation, getting water hose, getting like Emmett Till was killed. I mean, the way he was killed. Come on, man. This is this is based on a people and an uprise. But the Most High said he's going to toss us like a ball. He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. There shall thou die, and there the chariots of thy glory shall be the shame of thy Lord's house. Okay. So what I wanted to pull out, I was going to pull out that war that happened under the under the Jewish people when they wanted to. Because see, when it says in 46 BCE, the Roman Emperor Julius Caesar first established January 1st as a New Year's Day. Okay. Then it says Janus was the Roman god of, door, of doors and gates and had two faces on looking forward and one back. Caesar felt that the month named after this God January would be the appropriate door to the year. Caesar celebrated the first January New Year uh, New Year by ordering the violent routing of revolutionary Jewish forces in the Galilee. When it says Jewish, it was our people. It wasn't the it wasn't no Jewish people that they're talking, no European Jewish. It was the children of Israel, the tribe of Judah. Okay. Uh forces in Galilee. So that's why it says eyewitnesses say blood flowed in the streets. So that's what it represents. So a lot of people see, a lot of people don't understand that this whole thing is based on the children of Israel. Everything. Because if these people rise, the Hebrews rise, there's no way that Satan's kingdom can stay stay established the way it's the, the way it is now. Okay, so when you read in Isaiah chapter 22 verse 18, he will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. There shall thou die, and there the chariots of thy glory shall be the shame of thy Lord's house. So we, the Lord's house is in Jerusalem. We are taken out of the country. We are in a big country now, in a, in a large country, and we're following their it, it traditions. All right? And that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed. Like I said, I hope you all get back with me. Some people that understands. And like I said, I may be at error when it comes down to it. I'm not saying I know everything, but I just know. Let me show a picture of this mess here. This is the god Janus here. The weirdo with two two heads. And going back and one forward. Okay. That's what you're dealing with in New Year's. You're not dealing with the New well, January. You're not dealing with New Year's at all. This, you're reverencing this God here. That's how they get you. Okay, that's what you're dealing with. It's not the New Year at all. The New Year starts in the first month, which is when you got equal day. Which is that Sunday? I mean, equal day, equal night, which is that Sabbath, and then that first day of the week is Sunday. That's your first month. That's New Year's. Okay. All right. Hopefully, you all get back with me on this calendar. I know I covered uh, some things that could be hard to digest when it comes down to that. But like I said, I really want people to contact me with that information to see. And hopefully, the brothers from the Gathering of Christ can uh you know send me an email may like i said i may be you know uh at error in that but we can't follow their 
because see they got March 16th this year I mean yeah 2014 well their 15th is a Saturday in the 16th but that's not equal day equal night equal day equal night the 16th to the 17th as it is every so called March 17th 16th 16th 17th so they got it on a, on a Monday so I believe what they did was hijack the calendar to confuse there you have it alright love you all this is my life and I'll be doing this for the rest of it shalom